it kind of had an impulse buy for me anyway. I bought the um, Star Adventurer 2i. I've been looking at them for about three months. And like I said, for me, that's close to an impulse buy. Um, it can take me a year or more to make any kind of, and this isn't a major purchase, but it was $400, but it's not all about the money. It's about, is this thing even going to work? So you just spend some time looking at reviews. This had some troubling ones at the, at the onset. There was some overheating issues and stuff, which could have been people, you know, not doing it right, not having the right five volt connection if they had it plug to a power source which you can it runs on four batteries um, but I'm not all about throwing batteries away and rechargeable batteries are good for some things but um, maybe not for something that is quad this um, power draining and they're just, you're just gonna eat them up and so I set it up last night um, got my little p900 sitting on top of it which is not an astral photography set up um, I now have my eyes on another Nikon I think it's a Nikon 3500 <laughs> and maybe in a year I'll I'll buy one but um, right now this is a good enough setup I was really impressed um, how it tracked and I kind of came across this looking for different type of time lapse um, basically a 360 degree rotating where you can like set your time lapse up get everything going push the button as the time lapse is going it can rotate your camera 180 degrees over a few hours time and that's actually how I stumbled across this and more than likely how um, it will be used in some sense but after my little practice run last night um, I was quite happy with it they talk about you know calibrating it and um, just ways you got to you know you take a picture of one thing you can do that in the daytime and then but all in all this isn't really an instructional video you know I can build like anything from the ground up any kind of building structure whatever but when it comes to fine-tuning little tiny screws and little micro adjustments well my um, my um, one of my one of my calling it my patience <laughs> at that time is no longer a virtue and I just my my hands were not built um, for that I'll I'll build things not try to take little electronics apart so anyway we'll look at some of the stuff that I took last night and again I was really impressed at how well this thing came together so here's the first time I set it up and trust me it was cloudy this is not good video quality at all this was basically just to try to test it and to see how well it stayed in frame I had the Nikon set up it was 60 frames per second which and just however I had it set up exactly it was coming out to where I could take like maximum you know 15 minute videos and um, so this one is sped up 10% um, and then the rest of them will be sped up um, 20% as I took and I stayed in frame for let me see probably at least four takes five takes to so say an hour hour and a half and you'll be able to tell when I have reset it up because you're gonna see the angle of the moon um, change basically um, this as it's as it's taking it's basically just a 360 degree turn on the device so your camera is starting out as level as I could eyeball it and then as it takes the camera is just drifting to the side clockwise and um, but yeah this first one this first 15 minutes when I was looking at us it's like okay that actually works for me um, I was you know part of me because I know this is set up for astrophotography it's not set up for um, video and here's the one this is this is where it's turned into 20 times um, speed and um, still very good I had a lot of wind last night and I got to get some weights on that tripod and I would definitely recommend getting you can't put this on a cheap little tripod and um, so I had someone had given me that uh, Manfrotto um, couple years back when I got um, after he saw me out there with my Nikon and everything like that he just had an extra one and I kind of had to do some fixing on it but yeah you need a better need a more stable 
um, set up and you'll also have to get a ball head too I had the little BC master luckily it was because once I got everything out of the box I'm like oh crap I still don't have enough to do this but I was able to kind of take apart my little cheap BC master um, ball head and stick it on there I would like to get a nice micro adjusting ball head three-way micro adjusting ball head but again that'll that'll be in time I can make do with what I have right now and um, <clears throat> so again yeah I had a lot of fun last night I stayed up oh good I'm usually like I tell everybody I usually turn back into a pumpkin after nine o'clock but um, I think I was up to like 1 30 um, I just couldn't stop I just you know and this I was pretty much just watching it the whole time um, have a couple beers and just I had myself a good old time but um, again really impressed how well it stayed in frame and um, I probably don't have the exact numbers right here but you'll see it shift eventually I think anyway from what the clips that I've taken to put on here it is drifting some and part of that could be that it does need to be finely calibrated which again right now if if it's doing this good I'm leaving it like it is because I can just see my clumsy self getting in there and trying to fine-tune it and then I'll never be right again so I'm gonna I'm gonna say this ain't broke so I ain't fixing it um, and ultimately I there's so much speculation about the moon and I'm puzzled about things I've answered quite a few of my own questions you know over the years it's like moon speeds and moonrise times it's like we know it the moon rises a little later every night so you know last night let's just say it the moonrise was six o'clock then tonight the moonrise would probably be about 645 or so but I see how those fluctuate from as little as less than 30 minutes difference to over you know a hundred plus minutes from from time to time and some of it I think is the data they're putting out I think there's just there's a little error when it when moonrise is around midnight somehow the calculations get off a little bit but I do know the moon does speed up and slow down via in when it's an apogee or perigee it does not rotate the earth in a complete circle because we know it, it higher you know it's closer farther away and the axis is not um, lined up with the ecliptic and so in my mind I'm looking at this little device I'm going how are all these calculations in this thing you know so I would again not going to adjust it and I'll just have to kind of pay attention in my mind to document when is apogee when is perigee what is the speed of the moon tonight and I'll be able to look at this and see um, how is it tracking it when the when the f moon is at its full speed what does the tracking look like and when it's at its lower speed or is this device are all the calculations in there to make up for that and um, so anyway but yeah I would love to see um, like I said we see so much speculations is the moon hollow are there are there moon bases up there is it us is it aliens is it what is it this and there's a lot of compelling information out there but um, man this old boy I gotta see it for myself and this kind of gives me because if you have your regular setup when you zoom in on the moon you've done it anybody's got the Nikon I know the p900 was like the first conspiracy camera and stuff like that there's a p1000 now which I actually wish I had now because it has a longer shutter speed and it would actually plug into this device here's where I kind of went in um, on a full zoom but anyway I'm gonna do these um, more and more is see you get a new toy you want to be all active again and doing some stuff so hopefully the the cloud makers give us a clear sky tonight and um i can take some time get back out there maybe a little fine-tuned adjustment and then yeah talk about what i think about the moon and like to hear what you think about the moon and um and collaboration and i got to get time stamps on this and stuff it's like if i take I'm going to set my camera up tonight where it's taking about a 30 minute um, capture and let's say I do let's say I'm able to get like six hours of footage tonight I also bought a little Seagate um, external drive couple terabytes and just to store stuff but I just want to 
I cannot sit here and look at six hours of moon footage every day. It would be impossible. But if I'm diligent enough, time stamp it and secure it in an off drive and then say someone else sees something at one night somehow somewhere they saw this that night I'm able to then go back and look at what I have and then compare did I see anything in that timestamp frame and um, and I think if enough people got together not like hundreds but I think if you know eight or ten people got together and had a little group and each person was being diligent maybe you give like this night's your night and the next night's your night la 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 of course a lot of that depends on the weather and the cloud structure and stuff like that and i don't know if you've looked at many been paying attention to the radar maps but over the past couple years it's sometimes the entire our entire nation is under a cloud so go figure who knows you know so much speculation into that that I won't go into but yeah I think my little piece you know throwing it out there and um, if anybody sees anything that I have online yet yeah, just grab it man use it um, would love to see you know it shared and it just something come together so I'm gonna leave it at that I got so much stuff I would you know chase down some rabbit holes but I'm gonna um, I think I'm gonna take myself a little nap is what I'm gonna do and get back up and get set up tonight and cross my fingers for some clear skies. All right, see you guys. Thank you.